So welcome everybody to this uh, eNanoMapper webinar of today on Protein Corona. Uh, before starting, I will just mention that uh, for the questions, you can ask questions at the end, or you can, uh, if you want, or you have questions, meantime you can put them in the in the chat, and then Georgia at the end uh, can answer to, to the questions. So, Georgia, please. Okay, thanks. Hello. Uh, first of all, thank you all for being here tonight, or today. Um, we're going to talk about uh, protein corona fingerprints and how we can integrate gene ontology information to this kind of data. So, an overview. Um, we're going to talk about but in Animapper's computational infra infrastructure, uh, the ENM descriptors um, in uh, the infrastructure, particularly geo descriptors, uh, modeling and analysis tools for ENM predictive uh, toxicology, and uh, I'm going to present you our regress, a recently uh, published R library. And um, we're going to talk about protein coronal data, applications to protein coronal data, and particularly gene set enrichment analysis and biological validation using uh, ingenuity pathway analysis. So first of all, um, a few words about um, inanimapper's computational infrastructure. Um, uh, in Animapper's infrastructure is aiming to extract and analyze uh, knowledge from diverse types of ENM related uh, theoretical descriptors and um, uh, experimental data and associated metadata. Um, a number of modeling and analysis tools have been developed and implemented during the project and on the top of the OpenDocs application uh, program interface. Um, these include uh, theoretical descriptors, modeling algorithms uh, for correlating ENM properties with uh, biological information and integrated analysis, and by that we mean experimental design, inter-laboratory testing and dose response modeling. So concerning OpenDocs API adjustments and extensions, uh, what we, work, we are working on is uh, introduction of PML support for descriptor definition and model reporting. Uh, data preprocessing procedures, for example, scaling, normalization, and calculation of domain of applicability algorithms, in inclusion of domain of applicability algorithms. Um, also, for concerning the descriptor calculation algorithms and methods, we have included ImageJ, which is a web tool for, for image descriptor calculations. Uh, we have uh, been uh, uh, working on the utilization of Mopac OpenDocs services. Uh, we have included an extended Java-based uh, chemistry development kit, and also uh, we are working on gene ontology descriptors, as we call them, which is um, the main subject I'm going to talk about uh, tonight. Uh, for NanoQSR algorithms and modeling services, we have considered extensions and updates, as I said, of algorithms and modeling services um, in order to be compatible with API extensions and uh, in our mapper database uh, support. Um, also integration of third-party services, particularly uh, we have integrated our language, Python and Wacom. Uh, we have implemented statistical and machine learning algorithms, for example, regression, clustering and classification algorithms as uh, web services. Um, uh, we have uh, developed an R tool, an R library called R Regress. I'm going to talk about that uh, in a few minutes. And um, we have created uh, QSAR models for, for predicting cell association of uh, gold nanoparticles using corona information and also pathway based analysis. So, these three topics um, there are the ones I'm going to talk about. Um, just um, another slide to, to emphasize the integration with third-party services. So, as I said, uh, we have integrated Weka, the R language, and Python. Uh, particularly for the R language, we have uh, done that by open, the OpenCPU system, which uh, defines basically an HTTP API for embedded scientific uh, computing uh, based on R, and uh, it in a few words, it converts the R packages, the R libraries, from standalone applications to a web service. Um, so, oh, and here is a list of—it's uh, not exhaustive—of the um, 
um, algorithms we have uh, exposed as web services so far. So multivariate linear regression, lasso and read regression, elastic net, hierarchical clustering, by clustering, ID3 decision tree, partial least squares, uh, radial basis function, neural networks and support vector machines. A few words about our regress, which is uh, the methodology um, I'm going to test uh, the geo descriptors with. Um, the, the aim was to develop a tool to explore the space of linear and non-linear QSAR models, uh, predictive models. So it, it is an easy to use framework, just one call uh, function can do, uh, can do the trick. Um, I, we can, uh, it includes uh, linear and non-linear models, as I said, and there are other features included such as uh, data set splitting, cross-validation methods, um, specific regression uh, uh, parameters so that uh, they can optimize and um, a best model criteria which affect uh, the accuracy and the efficiency of the predictive models. So uh, the, the idea is that the user can just um, upload the data set and um, if um, you know if the, uh, the the statistical background of the user is not uh, um, irrespectively of their of their statistical background, they can produce results, uh, which um, um, and in the end the output is. Um, um, comparative, so you can uh, compare between methodologies, you can have statistics to assess the accuracy of the model and if uh, um, uh, the, the results are not um, the expected then you can rerun the script uh, by changing some parameters maybe or including uh, extra functions. Uh, being in our uh, package, obviously it's a free programming package and uh, here's the address where you can download it. And here I'm giving the regress workflow just to highlight a few bits. So uh, we're doing, um, among other things, a scaling of data set, uh, removing correlated features, we're doing data splitting for cross-validation. And in the end we have, we are reporting average uh, summaries um, and uh, cross-validation per, uh, per methodology and per uh, cross-validation type and also we're reporting best model statistics and uh, best model Y randomization. So this is a thorough, a fully validated uh, framework. Now a few words about protein corona data. Um, so when NPs are exposed to a biological medium, different biomolecules uh, will compete to interact with the NP surface to form a layer called protein corona. Um, uh, important factors for the protein corona composition are physical chemical properties uh, of the nanoparticles, for example, particle size, shape, charge, and so on. So, but the protein corona modifies nanoparticle physical chemical uh, properties as well. So understanding the nanoparticle protein interaction is a crucial issue, obviously. And uh, here I'm giving a, a picture uh, taken from a recent uh, work, a recently published work uh, by Richard Hall. So it's just a, a schematic re a representation of the protein corona with uh, proteins absorbed in surface. And uh, uh, what they did was um, they have uh, categorized, they, they're looking at uh, six um, uh, different uh, nanoparticles and they have categorized the, uh, the, uh, the proteins based on their, um, on their biological, um, on biological information. So we can see from the bars there that uh, different nanoparticles, um, the distribution, uh, sorry, the distribution of the proteins for um, each of the um, different nanoparticles. And their biological information such as coagulation, complement, acute phase, which are um, important uh, findings for, uh, and they have been reported, in fact, before um, in terms of toxicity. So the protein corona data we're going to analyze uh, comes from a recently published uh, work uh, from Walke et al. Um, uh, it consists of 84 gold and 12 silver nanoparticles. We're going to focus on the 84 gold nanoparticles here. Um, seven hundred, they have uh, included 784 distinct serum proteins 
um, they have identified 734 uh, distinct proteins from which uh, from whom 129 proteins uh, uh, were um, uh, suitable for relative quantification so that's the fingerprint to characterize the, the protein corona and uh, also they are um, uh, considered uh, 76 uh, protein signature based on an iterative uh, on iterative uh, partially square regression model uh, with uh, variable importance uh, projection uh, scheme. So um, the, the idea here is to predict uh, cell interaction, uh, cell association, or cellular interaction, using relative abundances uh, from proteomics data. And um, I'm, I'm summarizing here the results from Wildk um, et al. So they have sorted, as I said, uh, the um, uh, the proteins based on uh, the VIP statistic, um, and they have applied the PLS model. Uh, the um, the R squared uh, values that they are reporting are are uh, 0.81 and 0.61 for uh, leave one out and uh, fourfold uh, cross validation, respectively. And also they're reporting that um, fewer proteins, so top 14, top 32, 16, and 6 serum proteins are um, approximately as accurate as the full, full model. Now another result um, is uh, presenting um, some uh, nice uh, results in this particular data set again. So they have applied linear and support vector regression. Um, together with sequential forward floating selection and they have considered not just the protein descriptors but also the proteomic data but also physical chemical properties and they have found 0.86 for a fold CV uh, or um, 0.483 depending on the number and um, on which proteins are included in the model. Here I'm just showing you um, of the 76 protein signature um, of this protein corona data, uh, just to have an idea of how the, the, the different proteins are clustering. Uh, so uh, you can see different clusters by different uh, colors. And uh, for example, uh, you know, there are different groups of uh, proteins which um, have a biological meaning, um, extracellular region, wound healing, and the glycoproteins uh, for this uh, cluster at the bottom. So based on this, um, um, uh, on this clustering here, we uh, thought that the, it would be uh, nice to be able to uh, summarize this proteomic data to descriptors and be able to have a compact data set, but a data set that would, be, um, would create um, as accurate models as uh, the original data. Um, we uh, have seen the, um, uh, using the R library geo profile, profiles, the functional profiles of the 76 proteins from the molecular function geo, uh, gene ontology. So there are uh, some um, information here in this picture. We can see transporter activity, um, receptor activity, binding of course, catalytic activity, which are uh, pretty general. If we go up to level three of uh, the um, biological process, for example, geontology, we get to have some um, more details, so uh, sexual reproduction, meiotic cell cycle, or in the, um, if you see in the graph at the bottom for molecular function geomontology, we get to have a binding, but then it's protein binding or pattern binding, so it's a, a more clear uh, picture of what's going on. Um, we have then applied gene set enrichment analysis for the um, biological processes, geoontology, and the molecular function, geoontology, respectively. So uh, just to find the, uh, the, the categories, the pathways that are most significant, statistically significant. So we're looking here at p-values, hypergeometric p-values, and the blue, the, sorry, the red bars are the highly significant ones. And there are some, um, again, some uh, a biological information which uh, um, has been reported uh, before to be uh, important uh, uh, for uh, toxic studies, for example, protein activation cascade or um, um, 
complement activation. Um, and uh, here I'm giving you the gene set enrichment analysis for the KEG database and for the reactome database. So KEG ontology we have been looking at especially for um, infectious diseases and reactum uh, includes geo terms as well but it's a more uh, wider if I could say uh, database. So again here we have a uh, hemostasis for example we have some categories which have been reported to be important uh, for um, holding toxic exposure to nanomaterials. Um, in this table here, I'm trying to summarize the information we had from gene set enrichment analysis. So the five first uh, categories, they are included also and in reported in the original publica publication, the Walke et al. Um, we are reporting here the most significant uh, terms for this category. And also, we have found metabolic processes and uh, infectious diseases, so um, infectious diseases coming obviously from keg, but uh, th uh, I think this is a, uh, gives us a nice idea of how uh, the three different databases are complementary between them and um, um, the, uh, the differences between them. So now um, I'm coming to the main topic of this talk, GL descriptors. We wanted to create new descriptors that would summarize proteomics data, but also build statistically uh, significant predictive models. Um, based on the pathway analysis I just saw you, we, we saw that um, there's uh, some nice uh, and uh, biological, biologically meaningful groups of proteins corresponding to particular pathways. So we thought that integrating various types of um, data, omics data, with, uh, biolog with um, uh, gene ontology information would be uh, a valuable thing to do because uh, the, the descriptors that would be created, they would have a, um, a biological meaning um, and would be biologically interpretable. Um, so, uh, and this is of course uh, um, something that it has been done in the past with genomic uh, data sets and it's, it is a methodology which can be used to integrate various types of omics data, not just proteomics, but proteomics and genomics with uh, gene ontology or um, any other uh, pathway or protein-protein interaction networks. So the, um, the roadmap for our uh, framework here is um, we are selecting geo, uh, a geo category, we're identifying the important geo IDs, we're applying clustering algorithms to produce protein clusters and summarize proteomics data based on the clusters produced. Um, then uh, uh, for uh, the scope of this particular talk, I'm going to show you results for the protein, uh, for the geo, uh, from the geo descriptors using um, applying our redress software, and also gene set enrichment analysis uh, from the IPA software. So, uh, yes, that's just a schematic representation of the uh, geo descriptor uh, flow uh, roadmap. So we are uh, starting with the proteomics uh, data set, as I said. Uh, we're getting only the protein IDs, and based on those protein IDs, we're uh, constructing um, a geo uh, membership matrix, as we call it. So it's a binary matrix, basically, and one corresponds to um, um, to uh, the membership of um, a gene to a particular uh, geo term. So gene I belongs to uh, geo J, for example. Um, and then we are clustering this uh, binary matrix, and based on the clusters uh, we are um, we are estimating that we can summarize the proteomics data and um, uh, produce the geo descriptors. Here is just uh, an enlargement of the geo descriptor data set, just to give you an idea of how the data looks like. And um, having said that, uh, as I said, we're applying the Regress uh, framework to geo descriptor data set, and uh, we have found that the best set of uh, geo descriptors from the 76 protein set consists of uh, 14 geo descriptors. The best model reported is the random forest methodology with 0.73 for R-squared test. Um, 
and uh, also for uh, BLS we have 0.73 uh, which is for the protein corona set which is uh, higher than the 0.61 uh, reported by the original publication. So this is r squared test, random split averaged r squared test values. Um, here I'm just showing you the um, how the, the performance increases with the number of descriptors. So for the um, if you look at the random forest, the, the blue dust uh, line there, which corresponds to the random forest methodology, you can see the, the vertical line um, up to the 14 descriptors, which is actually the turning point. Um, we have a peak there, so it's uh, the maximum accuracy, but also we're looking for parsimonious models. We need to have uh, not many geo descriptors. Um, and here are the, um, the full list of results produced by our regress. Uh, package. So uh, different methodologies and then uh, different uh, cross-validation types. We have um, used uh, 10 random, we have called our request with 10 random splits and 100 Y randomization runs and uh, we report, uh, as you can see, random forest with uh, feature selection is um, the best, so 0.728. And in the last column, you can see the results for the whole set, for the 50, uh, 76 sorry, protein uh, corona data set. Those, as I said, are averaged R-squared test values. Now, based on those, and given that uh, we have just shown that random forest is the, the, the winner methodology, we have repeated uh, this procedure by including uh, geo descriptors one at a time. So we are... Um, um, using the um, variable importance uh, feature of the random forest and um, we are sorting geo descriptors. The first three descriptors give us uh, 0.51 R square value. Um, if we are include if we include uh, the fifth uh, the fourth sorry most important descriptor which is descriptor 12 that gives us uh, 0.52 if we include the fifth, uh, which is the descriptor 9, uh, that gives us 0.62 and so on, up to 0.72 uh, for descriptor 11th, which is descriptor 2, um, if we index them from 1 to 15 and to 14, I mean, um, which is very close to the um, 2.728, uh, which is uh, the number we get for all 14 descriptors. So based on this, we have um, grouped the geo descriptors to, into five groups and uh, following the analysis of the original publication. So group one uh, is including uh, geo descriptor 10, the most important geo descriptor. Uh, group two, uh, geo 11. And group three, uh, descriptor 10, 11, 6. And uh, group four, 10, 11, 6, 12, and so on. So, uh, and group 5 includes all uh, 14 of them. In the last two lines you can see, in the last two rows there, you can see the size of geo descriptors. Um, uh, by that I mean the number of proteins uh, for um, uh, geo descriptors and also for the PLS sets uh, considered in the original publication. And uh, the Yes, so here I'm just showing you that um, geo descriptor number 10, which is the most important geo descriptor found by Random Forest, uh, includes these proteins here, the summarization of these proteins. Geo 11 only has uh, this protein. Geo 6 includes 11 proteins. Just to give you an idea of how the, the summarization was done. And. Um, um, Yes, here I'm just saying that uh, we are uh, we're going to compare the analysis of the original publication, the partial list where, uh, results with uh, the, the geo descriptors, and we're doing a comparative IPA analysis for that reason. Um, so IPA is categorizing pathways uh, in a different way compared to other databases. I'm showing you here canonical pathways. Um, you can see uh, in the first uh, slot of the graph LXR, RXR activation, FXR, RXR activation, acute phase response signaling, 
which is, uh, um, in fact, a very important finding, a coagulation system. So the different bars here correspond to different groups and different analyses. Uh, for example, group um, uh, uh, the uh, black and gray bars correspond to a group 4 GA, uh, GO uh, descriptors and uh, group 4 PLS descriptors, respectively. And the results we have, the, the findings are, the finding is that uh, we can directly compare to the uh, PLS analysis. Um, sometimes we have, uh, we're doing better. And uh, for example, in the intrinsic uh, 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 proside activation pathway. Um, here for the tox functions, uh, we have again uh, the uh, different PLS and GO groups and there are um, uh, pathways, for example, cardiac uh, arrhythmia or cardiac uh, anterior pathy, um, which um, glomerular injury, which we're doing better than the PLS. Um, this is biofunctions, it's another category for the, from the IPA um, uh, software. Uh, where, um, for example, in hereditary disorder or um, organism malfunctions or uh, developmental disorders, uh, uh, geo descriptor data sets seem to um, be reporting um, higher uh, hypergeometric p values. Forgot to say that now uh, we're looking at uh, higher uh, bars because we are um, in the y axis, we're plotting the minus log 2 p values, hyper uh, hypergeometric p values. Um, so, to sum up, the proteins classify primarily to extracellular and secreted proteins. Uh, processes include um, uh, lipid met metabolism, complement activation, blood coagulation, or renal and cardiac toxicity. Um, uh, the main canonical pathways and toxolase results are seen already in the first group. These include LXR, RXR activation, as I said, acute phase response signaling, our um, atherosclerosis signaling, toxilis and canonical pathways uh, produced uh, informative uh, results uh, with, and uh, we can see that there is a correlation between the, the uh, enrichment and the number of genes. And specific IPATOX functions uh, were implicated, uh, for example, um, a liver hyperplasia or um, hyperplasia or um, hyperproliferation with group one list. Overall, there are many disease processes, typically repeated dose toxicity. Uh, for example, cardiovascular disease, hematological diseases, and so on. Um, and um, the conclusions. Uh, so, um, uh, for the uh, mechanistic modeling and pathway analysis, uh, we think that this helped us to get an insight of the toxicity mechanism. So we have statistically significant pathways found uh, using gene set enrichment analysis uh, by um, employing um, functions from R, either from R or the IPA software. And there were some very important results there, for example, acute phase response signaling, um, which, as I said, other studies have reported uh, this finding uh, following toxic exposure to nanomaterials, and they consider it very important. Um, geo analysis results produce similar results to the original publication, and uh, those established uh, correlations were used for, produ for producing geo descriptors. Now, why uh, producing geo descriptors after all? Why integrating geo information? Biological information, we think that, that uh, it would assist biological interpretation. Identify a set of proteins of potential relevance to toxicity, and uh, some predefined set gene sets are overrepresented, as uh, we just saw, and thus play a role in disease etiology. So, available biological information is used as a supplement to disease gene hierarchy. And uh, we think that we can improve power and reproducibility for QSR analysis. And um, we are uh, presenting here a compact data set, which is a key issue, I think. So a reasonably small number of descriptors from 129, we're up to 14 descriptors. We're currently working uh, towards increasing prediction, so improving clustering performance and stochastic search for a number of clusters. And by that, I mean a number of descriptors. And uh, developing web services for um, compatible with APIs so that users can um, 
produce geo descriptors and do all this kind of analysis in the in, within the nanomapper infrastructure. And that's the end of my talk. I need uh, to thank Pekka Gohonen, Penny Niemark, and Alexandra Rossi for their valuable comments and uh, contributions to this work. This is a list of reference, and also I need to say that the Nanomapper Associate Partner Program was launched recently. So you could go in this address and have a look. We'll be happy to give more details. Thank you very much. Thank you, Georgia. Very nice presentation. So uh, if you have questions, uh, please know that uh, you are muted now. So you can unmute yourself and uh, ask questions here. Or you can just put them in the chat. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes very well. Hello. Uh, uh, this is Rob from UCCIA. Uh, actually, uh, this is a quite uh, good presentation. There's a lot of there are a lot of information, and uh, I. And that's one or number of things I didn't, I, I could not follow when you because you presented very fast. So I would like to ask, what is the purpose of the genes that uh, reach mental analysis, and the the purpose for this one? And another one, when you calculated the geo descriptor, did you consider the relative abundance of the, each protein corona, each pro serum protein in the protein corona? Mm -hmm. So for the, your last question, yes, we did. Basically, uh, what geo descriptors do, uh, uh, they are summarizing the uh, the relative abundances of the proteomic from the proteomics data from the protein corona data. So we are just um, I'm sort of answering both questions here. We're doing gene set enrichment analysis to five um, to find the uh, the statistically significant. Um, geo terms, and based on those geo terms, we group proteins, we cluster proteins, protein IDs basically, and uh, given those uh, clustering memberships, uh, then uh, we are producing geo descriptors. We are producing geo descriptors um, from the protein uh, from the protein corona data. So yes, we are summarizing the, the protein corona data. We're using relative abundances, yeah. So, if I understand it correctly, then the uh -huh. relative abundance, the number of the relative abundance, is used as a weight for the for the weight, the average or something like that. As a weight, you said. Yeah, with a, so you get a weighted average for the two descriptors, and then you. Yes, that you could say you could say that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Sorry for presenting very quick. Quick, I didn't realize. So if you have <laughs> well, any fine, more questions, fine. please let me know. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I think we have uh, plenty of time to go back to some slides in case you want to. to oh, I think that's more, the explanation. So. The the explanation is quite clear now. Other questions? Well, well, if there's no question, I'm going to ask another one. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no. So, I, 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 this is the second time I heard, you know, about this protein corona data from you know, my I think the first one is from some some lady from your the same group a uh, couple of months ago, and in that presentation, I I tried to clarify the protein corona data. Exactly, you think about this. Warren, Warren Chen, that's the original, the author of the original paper. This this person is a biologist. He is doing drug delivery. So when you keep saying that the protein corona data and you using you think that the cell association is a toxicity measure, which is not because Warren Chen is doing nanomedicine. So his purpose is trying to improve the drug delivery. Efficiency into cell or in the in the into the tar cancer target. So the protein association or the, the cell cellular association is not a toxicity per se. So when we published the paper with Warren Chang, we actually call that as a bioactivity. This one <laughs> I want to clarify again. That is not toxicity. That is bioactivity. Right. So what you're saying is that the, the uh, hello. Rob. Hello? 
Hi, Nina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry, Georgia. Uh, that, that's because, all right. Uh, Rocky, uh, referring to my presentation a few okay. months ago, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. he was uh, saying that uh, protein corona uh, is not uh, toxicity, and I completely agree. This is a biological assay. We now start annotating it because this was one of the first data set that we had in the database, and uh, it was classified as toxicity assay. Uh, I completely agree. This is a biological assay, not necessarily to toxicity. We are now in the process of annotating the assays with the uh, proper ontology entries and so on. So thanks for reminding. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, I, I just want you know just want to make it clear because you know Warren Chan is doing drug delivery. His purpose is not to investigate the toxicity of another material. Right. And uh, another question about your descriptor selection there. That mm -hmm. I found that you use random forest and then you get uh, the parameter importance or the descriptor importance directly given by the random forest. I assume that you use the R package of random forest. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. So there, when you use the R package of random forest, you the, the attribute or descriptor importance is actually get from random permutation of each descriptor. So basically it means you get the importance is the individual descriptor importance that you did not consider the collaboration or the, uh, or the collaboration between uh, each descriptor. Some descriptors may be redundant to another one, some may complement or provide additional information for another one. So that's mm -hmm. why that's why when you do like the how to say include when you include include uh, more descriptors, sometimes you find that actually your performance decreases. That's the reason because random forest the the, the importance you get from random forest mm -hmm. is the individual. It's actually that's the we call that a, as a descriptor ranking rather than descriptor selection. Right. Yes, that's a good point. Um, the, the idea was uh, to be able to group the different geo descriptors in groups in order to be able to compare with the original publication, and we found that. That's absolutely correct, that uh, by including an extra descriptor, you might have reduction. So yes, this is a valid point. So and, uh, and also, sorry, I have more, more questions. That's all right. And, and also, when you do the four-fold cross-validation, that actually in one chance paper and in uh, in our paper in the nano scale, when we do the four-fold cross-validation, actually because the data set is uh, the data set contains only around I think it's eighty something uh, uh, samples. So actually, when you do four cross-validation, the robustness of the validation. You know, it's not very, it's not very good because they will, you know, the result will vibrate or will, will, will change uh, significantly. So, in the paper, in one chance paper and in our following paper, they actually the cross validation is, is not the traditional cross validation. It's actually the what we call that that's a repeated cross validation. Each mm -hmm. of the four cross validation is repeated 100 times. So that mm -hmm. one. When you do comparison, I think this one you you, you need to do the same uh, validation so that your result is comparable. Actually, Arigres is doing repeated CV, repeated cross validation as well. Oh, okay. We have done that for ten times rather than one hundred, as you oh, said, fine, but fine. it's repeated CV. Yeah. Yeah, because I did not see from your slides, so I'm raising this question. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, so one last question. <laughs> one last question is that mm -hmm. you compared with the with work with the work change first paper and the, the performance there they use a PLS. That's a linear model and the, the actually the performance there is is pretty good. But after we finished that paper, we realized there might be better way to do the uh, how to say the descriptor selection. So we did another linear model and the nonlinear model, and uh, so. I think the performance it was improved a lot. So I, I think if you want to, you know, do a comparison, probably it's better to do the second to compare with the second paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because that one yeah. we, we found that performance is pretty, uh, you know, impressive. Uh huh. Yes, the the numbers there were really high. We're doing that right now. So we're comparing with uh, the uh, the Liu et al. Uh, <laughs> 
publication <laughs> rather than the wild case. Is that what you, you're suggesting? Mm -hmm. No, no, I mean, I'm trying to say that it's good to see that someone can improve our result. I, I would like to see that, that kind of thing. And also, the genes that, uh, you know, is because that one, I think, if you've, you know, down to the gene level, if you can find some biological interpretation and based on your model, that will be another good thing. It's because the protein is, is just a, is, a, in the, is in the higher level, right? So, yeah. yeah. So I think if the gene analysis, you know, gene expression or gene set enrichment analysis can provide us more detailed or deeper uh, interpretation about, uh, you know, the activity of uh, you know, the, the, this protein corona, that will be a good thing. Thank you, Rong. Uh, no problem. So, there are any other questions? Mm -hmm. No more questions, looks like. <laughs> <laughs> okay then, so uh, we thank you for attending the, the, the webinar and we'll wait for the next one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.